Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next session is on solar tech perspective, top con advanced and type technology. Chinese solar manufacturer Jinko Solar has achieved high conversion efficiency for an N-type monocrystalline solar PV module based on its top con mono cell technology. I would like to invite Sai Charan, Kopili Technical Director, Jinko Solar, to tell us more about the technology. Welcome, Mr. Kopili. Hello, everyone. Very good afternoon. I'm Sai Charan Kapili from Jinko Solar, leading technical activities for South Asia and Central Asia market. Specific to requirements of Indian context, if you just try to look at what exactly is required, right from the days of Monopark, which started way beyond uh, in 2017 onwards. So it started with 158.75 for size and moved to 163.75, which we used to call that particular series as Tiger series with tiling ribbon. And then it moved to 182 wafer size, which is with uh, P-type uh, Tiger Pro kind of series, ranging the power class up to 540 to 580 kind of power class. So within the same kind of P-type mechanism, where if you just try to see the kind of maximum efficiency, whatever is possible to achieve on P-type kind of technologies is already achieved. So the kind of optimization or the new uh, introductions or new innovations within the space of uh, N-type technology is completely favored with PERT kind of technology or TOPCON kind of technology or any other new IVC technologies which are going to fall in place. So if you just try to look at what exactly is going to happen, so probably this particular Tiger Neo, which is coming from the second generation of N-type series called TOPCON kind of technology is going to lead the market for the next six to eight quarters kind of timeline. Quickly going into the uh, introduction of Jinko Solar, we have delivered more than 80 gigawatt kind of capacities right from the day of our inception. And last year itself, we, we crossed beyond 32 gigawatt of manufacturing capability. And we are in the verge of uh, touching to 40 gigawatt capacity uh, entirely with monopole kind of technology itself. And looking at the N-type kind of technology capacity, if you just try to see, we were, we were targeting to touch around like 10 gigawatt capacity for 2022 itself. And the market share, what we hold across the globe, where we have very decent market share. Within India, we crossed beyond 25% to 30%. And across the globe, we are, we are standing at 14, beyond 14% 14 kind of uh, market share. And on the records, specifically on the efficiency parts, if you just try to see, on P-type, we have already touched to around like, on the cell itself, 25.25% uh, uh, kind of thing on N-type kind of uh, technology, which is basically on the uh, cell, cell level itself, which is the uh, R&D part of the laboratory efficiency and specifically on the monofacial of uh, P-type kind of cell, it is, it is standing at beyond 24.38% kind of thing. So that's, that's one of the key takeaway, where in which it's always going to ensure and make sure that the technology, whatever is going to come in place from the, uh, from, from the plateaus of uh, Jinko, it's always going to touch the maximum efficiency, which is what is possible across the global context. So on the other fronts, if you just try to see on any kind of module manufacturer, there are two important uh, basic metrics are there. One is the technical metric and the other is uh, the financial metric. Uh, specific to technical metric, if you just try to see, the reliability of the product generally speaks a lot, which is why we can say that these particular PVL scorecards or DNVGL reports specific to uh, extended reliability test reports generally speaks more on that. And from the last consecutive six years, we, we, we feel the same thing where in which we were continuously getting rated as top, top number one manufacturer specific to this particular reliability scorecard. And on the other fronts, which is more, more uh, pre prevalent on the uh, bankability aspect, even on that particular thing, specific to Bloomberg or any other third party rated agencies, we were being rated as number one on that particular segment as well. And this is one typical slide on the uh, product roadmap, which particular power classes are we uh, trying to provide to Indian market or across the globe. If we just try to see this particular slide, where in which uh, the most important aspect is that uh, more of everyone uh, is is uh, trying to target with 500 or 540 above kind of power class, which means for Indian market, this is a kind of power class requirement, which is what is there. But this is completely coming with 192 mm wafer size. If this particular 192 mm is not available, people definitely will try and go uh, go and check for the next available option is 163.75, which comes with 470, 475 kind of power class on both monofacial and bifacial. 
So completely now market is looking at 540 to 550 kind of uh, class. But whereas this particular uh, thing is is not completely uh, this this particular power class is not completely being provided for the entire uh, required capacity of uh, 310 gigawatt capacity uh, manufacturing. Out of that, depending on the market demand capacity, close to around like 160, 140 gigawatt kind of capacity, this particular 180 mm vapor size is just standing at 50 to 60 gigawatt kind of capacity. And looking at the other segments, if we just try to see, 210 vapor size is the, is the other segment which can target with these kind of power classes and that is standing at around like 30 to 40 gigawatt capacity. So the remaining capacity, whatever is there, it has to be catered with these kind of 163 mm wafer size or 166 mm wafer size kind of products. So accordingly, if we just try to see Tiger Pro series or 190 mm wafer size, which is coming in both monofacial and bifacial with maximum power class of 545 with 72 cell and with 78 cell, this can even reach up to 580, 585 watt peak kind of thing. So this is a kind of, uh, uh, immediate available product on P-type kind of market. But yes, uh, looking at this particular scenario, whether P-type is self-sufficient to cater the all needs and demands of the market? Probably not, yes. The reason is that if you just try to look at N-type kind of technology or Neo kind of technology or Topcon kind of technology, which has majorly got the three major important benefits. One is the least possible temperature coefficient, whereas these kind of P-type modules generally stands at minus 0.35% per degree C rise in temperature as a temperature coefficient. Whereas N-type that stands at minus 0.3% per degree C rise in temperature. And the other important, um, important factor is that not just limiting only to the temperature factor, but yes, on the bifacialty factor and reduced degradation. Bifacialty factor with top con kind of technologies is standing at around like not less than 80% plus minus 5%. And whereas P-type is standing at 70 plus minus 5%. And similarly on the lines of other degradation factors, specifically for the first year degradation, P-type generally stands at 2% with these kind of advanced technology of Tiger Pro series. And whereas N-type generally stands at less than 0.5% and typically on paper, it can be committed as 1% kind of thing. And year on year degradation will be standing at 0.2% kind of thing with, uh, with N-type kind of technology. We can see here, this is uh, this particular green color slide, a uh, green color part of this particular slide is N-type kind of advantages, which we can see. And blue is with the P-type kind of technology. If we just try to compare both these particular technologies, it's completely N-type with uh, a temperature, temperature coefficient of minus 0.3% and first year for the first year degradation, 0.4% as year on year degradation and high bifacial defector. These all particular factors compiling together will help and benefit us in providing the highest possible specific energy yield when compared with the P-type kind of technologies. Whereas P-type, it is just standing at minus 0.35% per degree C rise in temperature as temperature coefficient and 2% as the first year degradation and 0.45 for the year on year degradation. So the most important thing is that specific to these particular three different parameters and metrics itself, we can see minimum 3% of energy yield variation, which can benefit on N-type kind of technology when compared with uh, P-type kind of technology. And on the breakthrough specific to cell efficiency, what we can see is that we have achieved already 28.7% on the laboratory side specific to cell efficiency. But on the mass production, the moment when we go for the mass production, specific to this particular second generation uh, top one kind of technology, it is standing at 24.5% on during, during mass production itself. Just because of this reason where we can see that the maximum possible highest possible power density modules can be achieved with these kind of top one technologies. And from this particular top one technology, we name this particular product as Tiger Neo, which comes with 192 mm wafer size and the power class is going to range up to 620 watt peak to 625 watt peak. And it is going to come in both monofacial and bifacial. But for the initial launch, what we have done is that the maximum power class, we made it available as 610 watt peak, but yes, eventually and gradually we will make this particular 610 watt peak to move to 620, 625 kind of power class. And this, this generally happens with 78 cell and with 72 cell, we can see that the maximum power class is going to stand at around like 565 with monofacial and 560 with bifacial kind of thing. If we just try to see what exactly is going to happen, P-type is, is the existing conventional kind of technology, which is what is there. N-type is the new technology, which is, which, which is what happened. And within N-type, the first generation is per technology, which is already there in the market, but not having much prominence just because of its uh, cost factor. And second generation technology is top one, what our Neo series, Tiger Neo series, generally comes with this particular top one kind of technology. And HJT is one such kind of technology which stands beside the top one. But looking at the manufacturing feasibility and flexibility of this particular technology, 
the silver paste, whichever is required for during manufacturing process at lower temperatures, that, that is going to be much more higher for this kind of HJT kind of technology, which is why cost of manufacturing which with HJT is, is uh, much higher when compared with Topcon. So which is why during mass production, uh, Topcon makes much more sense when compared to HJT. And going forward, IBC power sky kind of technologies can be the future expected kind of technology. And the kind of comparison, if you just try to make between P versus N of uh, Topcon and HJT, what exactly is happening is the tunneling layer and the oxidation process, uh, which generally happens, or the tunneling oxide process, which, which generally happens with Topcon. So this particular tunneling layer, whichever is getting added over here, generally reduces the CTM value, which means the cell to module ratio or the cell to module efficiency is being uh, uh, reduced over here, specific to this particular tunneling layer. And also because of this, the intrinsic amorphous silicon, which is being used in HJT is also making the same aspect over here. But this particular tunneling layer within Topcon technology reduces the degradation pattern as well. But the same thing is not happening with the HJT kind of thing, which is why we can see that first year degradation with Topcon generally will be standing less than 1% kind of thing. Whereas for the HJT with P-type, that generally will be standing at around like uh, not less than two percent, and year-on-year -year degradation at 0.45 percent. So that was the uh, that was the major takeaway and the key key advantage which generally comes with these kind of top-on kind of technologies. And within first year de degradation, as I was trying to tell you, the same thing that one percent is uh, less than one percent is the first year degradation with uh, top-on or neo kind of technologies with 0.4 percent year-on-year degradation. And extended reliability-wise, if we just try to see comparing P versus N with a maximum limitation of IC percentage of 5%, always NEO technology is having much better values when compared with P-type kind of perk kind of technologies. That is that is the most important factor which generally determines the life of the module and also specific to temperature coefficient by just moving from minus 0.35 to minus 0.3% generally provides minimum 2% to 3% extra energy gain, which, which is what is generally happening with these kind of updated and upgraded kind of technologies of uh, neo kind of technology. And on the P-type, if you just try to see the perk technology generally stands at 70% plus minus 5% of bifacialty factor. Whereas these particular neo or topcon kind of technologies generally will be standing at 80 plus minus 5%, wherein which just because of this extra 15%, whichever is happening with these kind of neo, tech, neo technology, what exactly is going to happen is that it will increase the specific energy yield, not less than 1.2, Percent kind of thing, depending on the albedo of that particular specification. And de de definitely, depending on the type of installation, whether you're going with fixed tilt or uh, horizontal single axis tracker, this definitely will benefit in the other way as well. And the most important other benefit is that with these kind of neo technology or topcon kind of technology, what exactly we are trying to do is that we are optimizing the materials in the bomb as well, which is what instead of going with a kind of flat ribbon or triangular ribbon, we try to go with circular ribbon, which is why we can see that. Uh, the maximum amount of bifacialty factor and low light irradiation uh, benefit is also happening with this and also bet better bus bar matching is also being happening with ultra fine soldering when compared with normal soldering. So all these particular factors, optical factors generally helps in increasing the low light performance and also increases the power, instantaneous power availability from these particular modules, which is, and the other, uh, uh, and the other kind of optimization what we tried in doing is Instead of going with a kind of conventional mode of using white EVA, we tried in going with a kind of white EVA plus a white back sheet. So with that, what we had noticed is that extra for what we can be achieved with the same kind of composition of the materials. And the same thing what we try to do with bifacial modules is like going with a kind of gap filling. So with that also, what we observed is that extra two watt peak is achieved with this kind of high efficient bomb utilization. At the end of the day, on any kind of technology, if we just try to compare these particular perk P-type or N-type topcon kind of technologies, low light performance is always better with an N-type kind of technology, which is why we can see that starting from 6 a.m. in the morning till 7 p.m. in the evening, we can find that uh, N-type is performing better and is and is absorbing a more amount of irradiance when compared with perk or P-type kind of technology. This is one typical slide which generally compares a different technology manufacturers specific to HJT or Topcon. And we can see that if we just try to compare the scorecard of these all these kind of technology benefits, almost this particular black ribbon, which is standing with Topcon kind of technology is benefiting all in one cost and specific to temperature coefficient and linear degradation and bifacialty factor. So this is topping all the existing perk technology or HJT technology, which is making 
to which is which is making this particular technology to be in much more commercialized aspect and economically also going forward within the within the next two to three quarters we can, we, we can expect that this technology will benefit us much more when compared with the existing work or upcoming IC kind of technology so this is one typical slide specifically for on the case study of india if we just try to see what kind of premium which can be benefited with this kind of technology with this kind of n type or neo or topcon kind of technology we can see that 3.75% is is a kind of extra gain which is what is happening with these kind of technologies compared with perk p type kind of technology wherein which 2.4 cents is a kind of minimum premium gap which can be expected with these kind of advanced top con kind of technologies when compared with a perk or perk kind of technology so this delta of 2.4 cents is a minimum expected uh, uh, minimum expected value specific to these kind of rajasthan kind of location depending on the other locations definitely this value will vary and that can be fine tuned as well and on the safety aspect if you just try to see 182 is more conventional in nature when compared with the 210 wafer size kind of modules and the kind of system efficiency or specific to compatibility of the electrical system it's always benefiting more with 182 mm wafer size modules just because of using 4 square mm cable instead of going with a 6 square mm cable where in which even if you are trying to go with a kind of y connectors that benefits more with 182 mm wafer size because of availability of inline fuses whereas the same is not possible with 210 wafer size kind of modules and on compiling all these particular factors if we just try to see with topcon kind of technology or uh, tiger neo kind of technologies optimized temperature coefficient higher bifacialty gain and low degradation factors always benefits in providing extra amount of energy to 3% and this is one typical uh, uh, slide specific to the uh, uh, case study whatever we have installed within our henning factory and we can see that this particular uh, n type gain whatever has happened with this particular technology is is having more than 3% kind of gain. so with this i end the presentation and open for all kinds of questions thank you mr kopali for all the information now let's move further and explore more